Hi everyone, welcome back to another DIY tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I made my kimono jacket. If this is something that you are interested on, keep on watching. Um, if you're new to my channel, you are welcome. And if you're my returning subscriber, you are also welcome. So guys, uh, I have here a lightweight crepe. And uh, this is a non-stretch. It's not stretchy, okay? The stretchy is not even up to 1%. So it's, it's not stretchy. So I have here three yards. So I'm intending to make a, a kimono jacket and a elastic waist, uh, waistband uh, short nigger. Okay, so that is why you are seeing this el uh, elastic here. Okay, so I'm going to be making a kimono and then a short pant with a elastic uh, waistband. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to arrange this down so that we can start cutting it. Okay. All right, guys, so I have gone ahead to arrange the pieces, okay? I have cut out the, uh, the front and the back pieces, okay? It's all arranged here, so as you can see, I have about uh, four, one, two, three, four, okay? So which is the front and the back uh, pattern together. So the width I cut out this thing, uh, this fabric is uh, um, unfold is by 20. Okay, unfold is by 20 and then without folding is um is 40. So remember that I told you my I have a three yard of fabric, right? So inside that three yard I took out 80 inches out of the three yard. So I divided into two to get the front and the back pattern. Okay, so the remaining one yard is remaining for less than one yard remaining for my short pant, which is going to be enough for me because I'm on a small size. So the length I have here is by 60, okay? So if you are, if this is the length of the gown or the kimono that you want, you can just maintain this length. But if you know the length that you want, if you want it more shorter, then at this point, you're going to be marking your uh, the length of your kimono. And uh, yeah, so right now, I hope you understand. So what I did here, I fold in, I divide that 80 inches inches into two to get the front and the back so the front is 40 and the back also is 40 by width and then I fold it into two to have uh, 20 inches okay so right now we are going to start now by uh, marking our measurement so I'm going to start here by creating the starting point which is going to become the shoulder line okay So now that I have marked my starting point, which is going to become my shoulder line, remember here is my center front and also the center back because I have the front and the back here, okay? So now I'm going to start the, uh, inserting my measurement. My neck width is um, 2.5. 2.5 inches is the neck width. For a small size, for a bigger size, you should mark three inches, okay? That, that is the neck width, unless if you want the neck to be wide open. But if you don't want the neck to be wide open, you want it exactly at your high neck. At a small size, mark 2.5. A big size, you should mark three inches. So here now, okay, we are drafting the both the front and the back. So what I'm going to do is to get out the back so that when I'm, I will cut it out, I don't need to start drafting at the back, okay? So I mark 2.5 inches for my neck width. For the back neck depth is going to be one inch. Okay, I'm going to mark one inch. So my back neck width is going to be one inch and I'm going to connect this now. You see my French curve ruler, place it here to create my neck width or my neckline. So uh, after marking my Connecting my neckline, I'm going to come to this point here. I'm going to mark my shoulder slope, which is going to be 1.5 inches for my shoulder slope, okay? So I'm going to use my straight ruler to connect it from this point here to me to where my neck weight is, okay? 
where I mark this 2.5 inches as a neck width. All right. So from this 1.5 inches down, I'm going to mark my slip opening. My slip opening, I'm going to uh, want it to be at um, at 12 inches. That will be my slip opening. I don't want it to be that wide. So from here to here will be my slip opening. So um, after marking the the 12, after marking 12 inches from here. To here 12 inches for my sleeve opening okay so i'm going to take my measurement from my shoulder line here okay from the shoulder line not from the slope okay from the shoulder line here to this point here i have 13.5 inches so i'm going to mark that 13.5 inches at the from the center front here i'll place my chair from the shoulder line here and i will mark this 13.5 here okay 13.5 here is what I have the same thing here. So what I, why I did this is for me to be able to mark the weight of my uh, kimono, okay? So that I can have a straight line, know where the actual part that I'm taking my measurement, okay? So the next thing I will just place this and connect it with a straight line. So at this line now, I'm going to place my I'm going to insert my round hip circumference. My round hip circumference divided by four is uh, 10. Then I'm going to add additional two inches, okay? So if you want your kimono to be very large, then you can add like three or four inches, but if you don't want it to be that large, then divide your round hip circumference by four and then add two inches to whatever measurement that you got, okay? So I'm going to mark 12 inches here. So this is where this is the width of my kimono okay so this is where it's going to be and then move on to the front i'm going to place my tape at the center front here okay and then i'm going to mark uh, seven or eight inches okay i'm going to mark eight inches so i'm going to get my straight roller place it at that point where i mark that eight inches here and then i'm going to connect it a straight line okay just going to connect it with a straight line all the way to this point sorry the line is faint the chalk is not that good okay forgive me but i hope with my explanation you should be able to understand what i'm doing okay you are going to mark eight inches or depend how deep you want the v to show so you're going to mark from the shoulder line to the where you want your neckline to start mine is eight inches and then i connect it with the straight uh connection okay connect it with the straight roller to meet with the eight inches point here okay so now that we are done from this part now what we're going to do now the next thing i'm going to do i'm going to connect from this line here i'm going to connect it as a form of a line shape okay it's going to go at form of a line shape all the way to the end of the length of my uh, kimono okay my kimono length is going to be at 50 so to make the whole thing easier for us to understand what i'm doing here because you may not be able to see everything all the way to the end so what i'm going to do remember i mark from the shoulder to this point at 13 inches okay so i'm going to place it here to take all my measurement all the way to the end okay so the next thing i'm going to do now is to start cutting the back neckline first okay i'm going to cut the back first and we are cutting it with sewing allowance okay so i'm going to start here by cutting from the back neckline first okay remember to add your joining allowance to your shoulder
So now that I've cut it out, so the next thing I will do now, I will take out the back. So down here is the back. So here is the front, okay? So that I can split it into two, okay? So the next thing I will do, I'm going to open it, separate the front, okay? So from this crease line, I'm going to separate it open. So now that I've done separating the front, so the next thing I'm going to do here, I'm going to place the, the front to my back so I can join the shoulder together, okay? So I place the right side facing the right side. So I will pin the shoulder together so that I can go back to my sewing machine to join it, okay? So uh, once I'm done pinning this, I will go to my sewing machine and I will join it with 0 0.5 inch allowance okay so i'll go and join it with 0 0.5 inch allowance so i have done join it together okay so what remains now i will go back to my weaving machine and overlock the rough edges so that i can come back and uh, use my bias so i will overlock it first before i will use the bias on it so i have done overlock the rough edges so and also i have given it a very good press at this point so the next thing i will do now i'm going to get my bias to pipe in it so i was not uh, i didn't find the the, uh, the color of bias that suits more to this color so this is the one i could get so i've done pin it so i will go now and join it already i have done joining so what i'm going to do here i will iron it okay see what i'm going to do i'm going to fold it in okay so this is what I'm going to do. I will go to my sewing, ma uh, sewing machine and then I will stop stitch it. And uh, at the process of stop stitching it, we are going to close down the side, okay? So we are going to arrange the side, the, the whole bodies together so that we can close down the side. So we are going to close it down with 0 0.5 inch allowance, okay? So I'm going to pin it first before we head to the sewing machine. So now that I'm done pinning, I have pinned the both sides, okay? So I will go to my sewing machine now and join it with 0 0.5 inch all the way down. And uh, the same thing from the other side, okay? And then I will stop stitch here. I will fold in it and then I will stop stitch, okay? So right now I'm on the sewing machine here. We're going to start now by stop stitching the the bias first, okay? So I'm going to start now by stop stitching the bias. So if you're if you're not familiar on how you can uh, fix bias to your neckline or to your dress or whatever thing you want to use bias on, if you don't know how to use it. Leave your comment below. Let me know. I will definitely make a video for you showing you how you can make a, a face in bias to your garment. Okay. So now that I'm done, uh, stop stitch the bias. So the next thing now, I will start joining the side, close down the side. Okay. So that is what I'm going to do. I hope you enjoy watching this video. I hope you're, you're, you're catching up. If you do give this video a thumbs up don't forget to give the video a thumbs up okay and uh, if you're yet to subscribe to my channel at this moment kindly subscribe and turn on your notification bell okay so you get notified when um, another DIY will be coming in again okay 
So once I'm done uh, closing down my side, I will head back to my ironing table. So I can give it a very good price. So I have done stitch the size. So the next thing I will do first before I will iron, I'll have to go back to my weaving machine to overlock the rough edges first. So I have done weave the, uh, the rough edges and also I weave together with hemming gum at the end of my kimono so that I can use it to hem the lower part just like this, okay? So it's easier for me to uh, iron it, fold it rather, it's easier for me to fold it than to, after finish, then I place hemming gum on it. So the next thing I will do here first, first thing I will do here, I will go to my sewing machine back. I'm going to uh, hem the slip opening, okay? Just like you see me doing. I'm going to iron it, fold it twice so that I can uh, stop stitch it, okay? So that is what I'm going to do right here. So I will do the same thing to the second sleeve. So I have done uh, hem the slip opening, as you can see. So it's looking so nice. So what's left now is for me to iron it. So I'm going to start now by ironing, uh, folding the lower part, okay, so that we can, um, yeah. So I will start here by folding it with 0 0.75, okay, it's not up to 1 inch. Or rather, you can fold it with 1 inch, depending how, uh, how long is your, your kimono, okay. So mine, I noticed that the 53 inches that I cut, it was too small for me so yeah so i just used uh, one inch to fold in the hemming part okay so that is what i'm doing right here so yeah if you don't want to use hemming gum then you can just go to the, your sewing machine and just fold it the way i'm folding and then you are going to just uh stitch it okay like you're going to just stop stitch it right so at this point i'm just ironing all my uh, my 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 garment so i'm ironing it give it a good price so that i can have a clean finish at the end of the day so that is what i'm just doing here so this is what i will encourage you to do too if you want to see a finished look when you finish making clothes and you want to see it looking so nice you are advised to iron it okay so this is the finished look this is how it's looking like at the moment and um, in my next video i'm going to show you how i made the the short pants with elastic waistband and with pocket okay so if you are interested stay tuned on my channel don't forget to subscribe if you are yet to do so and turn on your notification bell so that you get notified when another video will be out okay and help me share this video and um yeah have a wonderful day have a beautiful morning afternoon evening wherever you are watching this video from okay thank you so much for watching